I'm Alex Del Sordo, and this is another Athlete Profile interview taking, uh, t talking about the open men category. And I have Andrea Buck with me from OCOC. And Andrea, uh, I'm excited about this one. Now, um, I, I, I'm gonna throw out some names, as, names and some scores before we get into the interviews. And I, and I really want the West Coast perspective. I wanna know, you know, you've been rowing for a long time. I wanna know what you feel about this. We have, New, like recently added, because we forgot to put him on there, Isaiah Harrison, a 17 year old phenom. He went 420 for the 1500 meter piece. And then one second faster, we have Clark Dean, the Messiah of rowing in the, on the East Coast. And we got a guy, a German, who in my mind looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator. Ali Zeigler, uh, world champion single scholar. How are you feeling for this tournament right now with these names that I just dropped? Well, uh, you know, I, it's, I think it's kind of wide open. And a 1K is so bizarre, right? A yeah. 1K is just a distance like throwing down, like we don't particularly train for 1K. And that was just the seating piece, right? right. So I have some questions when it really comes down to it, when they start to see how the brackets are shaking out. Uh, I really think it's anybody's, it's anybody's, it's anybody's I think so game. too. And, you know, we got the one, we got the 1500 meter that just ended and the guys that we're talking to here today all advanced. Okay. Which mm -hmm. is really exciting. But the one minute barn burner, right? How hard can you go for one minute? And, and I'm going to bring up a name that you've never heard of and, and, and no one in the rowing world has ever heard of, but Matt Lukacs. Okay. Now this guy has never touched the water in rowing, but he went four he went 440 something for his 1500 meter piece. This guy is being trained by an Olympian, a female Olympian uh, out in California. So like guys like him could possibly win this thing, right? I mean, what do you think about CrossFitters? Absolutely. I mean, I think that that's an interesting, I think it challenges us as rowers to have, um, have people come in with no preconceptions. Like we all have so many deep seated preconceptions about what we, sh what we should be doing as individual athletes, what different pieces should look like. And I love, I love the idea of people coming in with just no perceived limits or their limits are really different than somebody with a background in rowing. Um, and I think that's also, that kind of translates to, I'm very interested to see how Isaiah does uh, as a West Coast kid. Like he, um, he comes to the Seattle area periodically and you see him out on the water and you can see him from a mile away because he is a, he is a <laughs> large human being. Um, so when, when he's in town, you know it. Uh, but but, you know, I he's, think, he's new, like he's fairly new to rowing, but you got Clark Dean who yeah. has been rowing since he was like six, in, like six years old, seven years old, uh, or no, 10 years old, I think is when he started rowing. And that guy, Harvard, uh, and right now dropping the fastest time at 419, but we have someone up now. So we're going to do our first interview. Okay. Uh, and it's Roy Jones, um, and I don't even know where this guy's from, so this is exciting. So we're going to bring Roy on uh, for our first interview here. Hey. Hey, Roy, welcome to the show, man. What's up? So listen, dude, I'm excited about this. So uh, I, I'm Alex Del Sordo. This is Andrea Buck from Pocock Racing Shells, and we got five quick, simple questions for you. All right. We want the audience to know who you are. So my first question for you is, because I don't know anything about you, where do you row? How long have you been rowing? Where, where are you at? Man, you're wearing this. You're wearing a jacket. I'm in Baltimore. <laughs> um, Baltimore. <laughs> so uh, I row for for the Baltimore Rowing Club, and then for this competition, I'm in the under the uh, the Mad Team Indoor Rowing Club. Uh, same so this Andrew. is wild. Like I now I now have to root for you since you are a BRC <laughs> member, and I feel like an idiot for not knowing this. Um, what is uh? What is the one distance that you say, I'm going to own, this is mine, I'm going to crush it? Uh, so probably my best distance in this competition is probably uh, the 750, but uh, it might be hard for me to get there. So I'll have some competition to get to the 750, but if I get there, that's probably my best distance. Well, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but um, you did beat CJ Bound. I mean, you I, I, I was I just put up the uh, I just looked up the bracket. So I was looking at the times and everything. So I'm through the next round one minute next week. Uh, so I know Andrea's got some questions for you. So go ahead, Andrea. When you're looking at those brackets, who do you see besides CJ? Obviously, who do you see as your uh, biggest competitor out there? Uh, in my bracket. So Paul uh, Marcy, um, he's the one seed and he does a lot of the competitions. I do the, uh, the cross team challenge which is like a monthly uh, rowing or erg competition that, you know, 
uh, I do, and there's probably like four or 500 people that do it every month. He's on there every month, so I see his times. Uh, so I know he's going to be stiff competition uh, in my bracket. Love it. So how do you feel, like, based on knowing what you know about him, how do you feel about your chance to progress through him and get to those, to put yourself in a position to win? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give, uh, you know, 100% uh, when I'm up against him, uh, and we'll see what happens. So last question, because um, it is a pie in the sky. I mean, Ali Zeidler, Clark, <laughs> these guys are just, they're on a different level, right? But pie in the sky, you win the money. You win a couple grand. What are you going to do with the money? What do you want to do? Yeah, so I, I feel bad saying this because I watched the video of all the masters, and they're, they're ready to donate to, you know, cancer research and their boathouse. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I, I'm interested in buying a giant rabbit, so a continental giant. Uh, and if I get fifteen hundred dollars, uh, I'm gonna buy a giant rabbit. <laughs> is that even a thing? Yeah, they're, they're about the size of a of a border collie. It's a, it's a living rabbit, a live rabbit. Yeah, a pet. No, I mean, look it up. It's about it's the size of a border collie, and um, yeah, I want one. So if I beat Ali Zeidler, then I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, pay. The I money. will buy it for you. <laughs> And I will deliver it to your house because you are probably down the street. I'm, I'm, I live on Wilkins, man. I'm two miles down from you. Oh, my. Come on. I hate myself for not knowing this. Roy Jones, thank you for participating in this uh, interview. This is going to go all over social media, and we're hopefully going to be on Row 2K as well. So everyone out there in the rowing world will know you want a giant rabbit as a pet. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Okay. See you. Bye. Wow. Uh, Andrea, a, a giant rabbit. I mean, I didn't know that existed. A, a continental rabbit. Everyone's Googling right now. You know, everyone's Googling. Everyone is Googling what's a continental <laughs> rabbit. That is hilarious. I think next up we have Tim Jones. Uh, and this guy's a beast. This guy's a 440s kind of guy. So uh, next up is Tim Jones. He is. The old Zoom in the car. Hey, welcome to the oh, show. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? I can. I can. Okay. So, Tim, I can see you're multitasking. I like it. Uh, I'm not driving. Oh, you're not driving. Good. Good. No, no. We have uh, we have five simple questions for you, bud. Okay. Um, and and this is Andrea Buck from Pocock Racing Shells, and I'm Alex Del Sordo. Tim, we want to know. Uh, you dropped a 444. You're a strong dude. I love the beard. Uh, Thank where are you. you from, man? Where are you from? Where do you row? Where? You, like, give us your background. All right. I'm from Frederick, Maryland. Um, I row uh, at a Baltimore rowing club. Uh, this will be my fourth season rowing. Uh, I did a season with Potomac Boat Club in D.C. last year. Um, I've been ergin for about the same time, four years. Uh, you're new to just rowing, kind so you're of, fairly new. You're fairly, are you fairly new to rowing? Yes. Um, I actually ran track and cross country in high school and college. Um, love cardio, and rowing seemed to be a more fun version of cardio. With you totally lost, Alex. Well, I'll, I'll jump in on the questions then. Um, that's awesome. I love seeing people coming from different backgrounds and hearing the challenge of rowing, seeing a new challenge after you've already obviously been challenged as an athlete. Um, when you look at the brackets, who do you see as your biggest competitor? Well, we have a world champ, single scholar, Ollie Zeidler, uh, Dean Clark, or Clark Dean, uh, world champion, world junior champion, single scholar. Um, they're the two biggest challenges. Um, but really, the, whoever you face the next round, this is an interesting competition where it's different distances. So you kind of have to prep a little bit for different distances. In 10 miles. And Turn especially right. the uh, one minute distance that's this week is kind of an oddball distance for a lot of rowers. So anything can happen. And that's kind of what makes this competition fun. Totally, totally. That, how does it feel going up against people of that caliber, but being able to compete? Like you're, like you're, on, a, you're on a playing field where you can compete. What's that feel like? Uh, you know, it, it's fun. You can't be afraid of losing, and pretty much, you know, if you face Ollie Zeidler, um, the, the odds of winning aren't great, but it's fun to just be able to compete with the best in the world, and that's what this competition has allowed uh, me to do, and I like that. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you found it, because you certainly do seem like a very strong dude. If you do make it through to those final brackets, and you do end up winning the money, uh, what, what are you going to do with the winnings? Oh, definitely vacation. Um, with COVID-19, it's kind of, I think all of us have been cooped up for a long time, a few months, and go somewhere, maybe somewhere tropical like Hawaii. So $1,500 would go a long way to help in a vacation fund. 
Totally. Well, it was great chatting with you. Uh, best luck as you move forward and progress. And um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the World Caliber competition. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Uh, we, we, we got Jack Trimble, a number one seed here now. And uh, again, dropping splits as if this guy could win this thing. Uh, so I'm excited to see what he has to say. And I love the overalls. I mean, this guy's a, he's a, oh, I love it. I love the overalls. <laughs> hey, everyone. Jack, Hello. welcome to the show, man. Um, I'm, I'm Alex Del Sordo. This is Andrea Buck from, uh, from Pocock Racing Shells. Hey, and uh, Jack, we, uh, you're wearing overalls. You, the, you are the perfect visual of a rower. I, I love it. Um, Am I late? No, no, you're perfectly on time. This is, this is perfect. We're doing individual e uh, interviews. Perfect. Um, right. So, Jack, we're asking everybody this. Uh, where do you row? Where are you from? How long have you been rowing? I currently row in Minneapolis, Minnesota, for a club called 612. It's the area code in, in Minneapolis. Um, great little club, kind of like a branch off of one of the larger clubs. Um, all like singles and double rowing, no eights or fours or anything. Um, I'm from New Jersey. I went to college at Hobart College. Uh, you know Reed Johnson. I've seen your guys. I've been following you too uh, in your conversations. Um, and I've been rowing for... I, I walked on in college, so 13 years. Now, you say you're from Jersey. Like, what part of Jersey are you from, dude? That's still New Jersey. Wow, okay, I dig it. I'm a South Jersey boy. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm down in Ocean City. Cherries, like Cherry Hill? And... <laughs> Cherry Hill. No, like, like, like Ocean City. So, hey, oh. listen, you, uh, you dropped a ridiculous time here. Six, uh, you won 425. You're one of the first. Wasn't that ridiculous for the... That's fast. Well, I mean, I, mean, I know I, I recognize some names in the competition. So, like, I, I've, I see what they do over, like, 2K and 6K. I think, like, Ollie pulls my score for a 6K or something. <laughs> I mean, I, not really, but, like, it's yeah. – You're close, though. I mean, Clark Dean went 419, and you went 425. You're not that far off. All right. All right, Clark, I see you. <laughs> I know you, but I see you. So, I, you know, my, 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 next, my next question is, out of all the distances, what is the one distance that you say, I own this one? This is mine. No one can touch me. Oh, God. Uh, probably one of the, lo like, the longest distance. Well, these are all short distances. Yeah. I, I, did your ro I did your March Mania yeah. um, competition as well. Uh, and I think I excelled in, like, the 6,400 meters. Yeah, 6,400 meters, yeah. Yeah, I think I did the best in that one. Just because I when I train, I don't do these beast interval workouts where it's, like, 12 by 500 and all those stuff. I just do like 80 minutes, 100 minutes of long, mm -hmm. long and slow. So I think I have that's that endurance for long and slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know Andrew's got some questions for you. Bring it on, Andrew. Yeah. So who do you see? Do you, when you're looking at the brackets, who do you see as your biggest competitor? Uh, I think I'm the biggest competitor in the competition. <laughs> Six, eight. I, I don't, I, I'm not sure anyone's taller than that. Um, but honestly, uh, Ollie, I mean, He's a world, he's a world renowned rower, world renowned name. Like if you follow him on social media, you, he posts his stuff and it's just jaw dropping how fast he is. I think I've, I've seen like some of Clark's times. I don't, I'm not too familiar with his, yeah, I think he kind of like shut off when he went to college, but um, Ollie is obviously the, the guy to beat. There's another, there's a youngster in there who I think is six, nine, Isaiah Harrison, who was a late ad. So, yeah, right. Yeah. So you've got 16 years old. Yeah, he's 17. I think he's 17. Isaiah, come on, man. I think I saw him at Crash Bees, actually. Yeah. This is ridiculous. I was not expecting these names. So, Andrew, yeah. what's the next one? Um, and so, so given the fact, if, if you're your biggest competitor, you, you're backing yourself, you believe in yourself uh, to go far in the competition, what would you do with the winnings? Oh, what would I do with the winnings? Um, I would probably, this is going to, I would honestly see if, Reed, honestly, Reed Johnson, he, is, he has been my like personal coach for like the last two years on and off. I'm, I'm, I have some lofty erg aspirations, um, rowing as well, but more so on the erg. Uh, and Reed knows them and he's been coaching me. So if I could help Reed out with PCRA or anything he's doing, he is such an advocate for the sport. I would honestly see what he needed with the, if, if, I, if it could help him with any of his endeavors. That sounds like, oh, you're, you're so great. But like, honestly, I own, I owe him a lot. 
uh, his time. You are, uh, man, it. like you're a sweetheart. I mean, Jesus Christ, like you're going to donate your, your prize money. We got a guy on here that wants to win a con pay by a continental rabbit. <laughs> as big as a house. Like that's what he wants to do. <laughs> what? Like a I'm stuffed animal? Yeah, he wants to buy like an a animal, like a live, a living animal. He wants to buy. Look a and Google it. <laughs> We're all learning this morning. <laughs> so, I'm gonna wrap it. So, so Jack, I mean, uh, last question here. What, yeah. what do you feel like your chances of winning this thing? Like, how how strong do you feel about making it to the final four and, and into a victory? I came in thinking I was going to do pretty well. After the March Mania, I I think I made final four March Mania. Lost to Thomas Pfeiffer. I think that's how you say his name. Yeah, the Beast. I've been following him on the Eric as well. Um, and so I, I, and looking at Regatta Central, I, I could look at the entries and I could, and I saw some names that I thought could put up some scores, but I thought I was going to do well, but then there were some like late entries, like Isaiah, come on, man. I think you cranked a 553 or something at Crash Bees. And I was like, all right, he's setting records. He went five, uh, what, 548 for our, our March Mania. I mean, oh, he nice. broke the world record. Oh, great. That's my chances just plummeted. <laughs> uh, my chances are slim, but I'm going to give it my 100%. Best. We're gonna we're gonna follow you, Jack, all the way through, and uh, we're gonna be interviewing you next week after the next oh. round. So, cool. um, congratulations on moving into the to the next round, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. You did, you made it, you advanced. <laughs> all right, sweet, great news. Well, well, thank you for being part of the show, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Yeah, you guys keep doing what you're doing. I love following you guys and I love everything you guys put out. So, keep I it up. love it. I mean, these guys are characters. I love it. Minnesota nice. Like you can't make that up. Overalls, a great, a, a very um, articulate and great idea in terms of giving back to the community and giving back to people who've given to him um, and to grow the sport. I, I just definitely, uh, definitely pulling for that guy. I, I am definitely going to be cheering for him from the sidelines. That's for sure. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes here. You know, I take notes on this and, and you know, these guys, these just genuinely great people, super competitive and, I love how like interested they are in the competition. Like they're Googling people, they're following people. There is a subculture to rowing. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> and there's a whole nother level that I don't know existed. So um, next up though, um, we're gonna be interviewing the open women. I'm very excited about this one. So in a little bit, we're gonna bring in the open women. Uh, and uh, I think this is, uh, there's some, some real speed demons in here. So at least for the time being, I've had a great time. I know that you had a great time interviewing these guys. Uh, so that's it from us at Rower's Choice and Pocock Racing, Se Racing Shells. Uh, and we'll be doing more athlete profiles later on. Thanks for watching.